section 3.3 talks about deemed property. So, the following is not property necessarily at the date of death. So understand what the point is behind deemed property. It says it is something which we deem, so deem means treat as, something which we deem to be property, so treat as property. Now, the first one is a domestic policy. So this is a domestic policy is a policy which is paid out in South Africa, such as a life insurance policy. So when a person passes away and they've had life insurance, that life insurance will pay out. Now, it is possible for me to take out life insurance on my spouse. It is possible for me to take out life insurance on my children. My children can take it out on me. I can take out life insurance on my friend, on my other family members, on my business partners. When that person then passes away, the life insurance policy pays out. Now, understand the following. If, let's say I have a life insurance on my name, and I die on 1 June, the life insurance will only now pay out a couple of days later, whenever everything is sorted. Let's even say it's quick. Let's say they pay out on the 5th of June. On the 1st of June when I passed away, there was nothing, I didn't have that property yet. It was still somewhere else. That is why it is deemed property on the date of death. So they say, yes, we know you didn't have it, but we will treat it as if it was there on the date of death. Okay, that's what it means. Now, if someone has life insurance on their name, and they pass away, that life insurance will be included in the estate duty calculation. Now, take a second to understand what I'm saying there. If I have life insurance on my name and I die, the life insurance will be paid, included in my estate duty calculation. That seems simple. If my spouse has life insurance on my name and I die, so think now what I'm saying, someone else has life insurance on my name. So if I die, the life insurance pays out to them. If that happens, the life insurance is still included in the estate duty calculation. So in other words, the person who, on whose life this life insurance depends, so the person who, when they die, the life insurance pays out, will always be included in the estate duty calculation. Now that seems ridiculous, doesn't it? Just think about what I'm saying there. You take it out of my name, and I die, it's included in my calculation. In other words, or let me swing it this way around, I take out life insurance on your name, you die, and it's included in your estate duty calculation. Now that seems unfair. But it's just because we're seeing it at this point in time. What you need to understand is that we'll see there's a section, section 11 in the Estate Duty Act that tells you that other people may be liable for estate duty. And this is one of them. So... If I so understand what it means, if I take out life insurance on your name and you die, it's included in your estate duty calculation. So there will be estate duty calculated on it. However, section 11 will force me to pay the estate duty. So yes, it is included in your calculation, but the only reason for that is so that it, it gets taxed at some point. I will still carry the tax burden. So it is not unfair. All right. So now, guys, how it works is the following. If someone takes out the life insurance in someone's name, that person passes away, it gets included in the estate duty calculation. The value that gets included is the amount that is paid out, less any of the premiums which have been paid, uh, paid by the beneficiary, plus 6% compounded interest. Now, this is uh, an important thing for you to understand. If Mr. A has life insurance on his own name and he dies, that gets paid into his estate, the life insurance. Will be paid into his estate. So let's say this so let's say that the value is a million rands, and let's say the premiums plus six percent compounded interest, and they should give you that. So that compounded interest over the period, let's say that is three hundred thousand rands. Now the value will be, in this case, it will still be a million rands in the estate duty calculation. Why? Because Mr. A paid it, and it was paid into, and the beneficiary is the estate. Okay, so let's change it a little bit. So let's say here's Mr. A, 
And here's Mrs. A, his spouse. Mrs. A takes out life insurance on Mr. A's name. She pays it and everything. All right, and it's this value. Mr. A now dies, and that amount is not paid out to Mrs. A, it is pay, uh, or to the estate, it's paid out to Mrs. A, because she's the beneficiary. Because she is the beneficiary, and she's the one that paid it, the value that will be included in the calculation is a million minus 300,000 rands. Okay, so if the person who paid it also receives it, you get the deduction. The following domestic policies are not deemed property and there's no state duty. So this is the exceptions to the rule. So we've had, remember now, life insurance is always included in the person whose life was. Here are now the examples when it will not be. A couple of exceptions. The first one is, if it's paid out to a, spa, a spouse or a child, I almost said a spouse, if it's paid, it's paid out to a spouse or a child and an anti-nuptial or a post-nuptial contract. So before you get married, you sign a, a anti-nuptial contract. After you get married, you sign a post-nuptial contract. So you sign a, a contract with your spouse saying, if I die, life insurance goes to you or life insurance goes to my child. That is not included in my estate. Right, life insurance paid out to a business partner of the deceased to enable that partner to purchase the deceased share in the business, in the, uh, uh, in the partnership or the business, and if no part of premium was paid by the deceased. Okay, so... Here is Mr. A, Mrs. B, Mrs. C. The three of them have a business. Partnership or a small business. Right. Mrs. C will take out life insurance on Mr. B, Mrs. B and Mr. A. So that if any of them of them passes away, Mrs. C can buy it. They she. Mr. A will take out life insurance on Mrs. B and Mrs. C. Right, same reason, and Mrs. B will take out on Mr. A and Mrs. C. So basically, you take out life insurance on your partner, so when they pass away, that, that life insurance will pay out to you, and you can use that to buy their share of the business. Okay, let's make it, just to make sure, a little bit simpler. Mr. A and Mr. B, two people. Mr. B will take out on Mr. A's name, and Mr. A will take out on Mr. B's name. So if Mr. B dies, 50% of this business will be valued, and it will have to be purchased by Mr. A. Otherwise, who's, who's going to buy the business? Right, so this will enable them to do it. And the last one is, if a policy was taken out by a third party and no premium was paid by the deceased and no part of the policy is paid to the deceased estate and the policy is not paid out to a relative of the deceased. So, for example, if you rent a car, they might require you to take out life insurance, the, the place you're renting the car from. So in case you die of an accident, life insurance pays out to them so they can recu recover the cost. Right. In a case like that, you did not pay the premium, so you didn't pay the life insurance. None of it will be paid to you, and it will not also be paid to your, any of your relatives. So if it's a complete third party taking on life insurance in your name, and you, it has nothing, you're going to not get any benefit, you didn't incur any cost then that will also not be included. Right, our next uh, dean property, donations more to causa, which you also encounter when you look at donation stats. Remember, this is a donation in contemplation of death. So if I say to you, if I go skydiving today and I die, you can take my watch. So I go skydiving and I die, that watch is now yours. It will still be included in my estate. That's what they're saying. Any amount due from the spouse's estate if the deceased and the spouse were married out of community or property subject to accrual. Okay. So, if you are married out of community or property subject to accrual, here is Mr. A and here is Mr. B and they are married. Right. Um, before they got married, before marriage, Mr. A had assets worth a million rands and Mr. B had assets worth two million rands. After marriage, Mr. A has assets worth three million rands and Mr. B's assets worth 4 million rands. Okay, so during their marriage, Mr. A, well, or assets increased by 2 million, as did Mr. B. So together, it is 4 million rands. So that means each of them, in this case it worked out now in my example, each of them is entitled to 2 million rands of that. 
Okay. Now, that means in this case there will be no accrual because they already have it. Right, but let me change it a little bit. So let's say Mr. A, Mr. A's wealth went from 1 million and it stayed at 1 million. Let's say it like that. And Mr. B, of the marriage, he may pursue more of a career. So null, 4 million. Right. So this means together they made 4 million. So each is entitled to 2 million of that. So if Mr. A dies, his estate, let me do his estate duty calculation. He will have the market value of his assets, which is that million rands. And he will add the 2 million his share. That will be the accrual claim. So the total will then be 3 million. Okay, if Mr. B died, if Mr. B died, you'll see it works the other way around. If Mr. B died, you say, what is the value of his assets? 6 million rands. But 2 million of that will be a deduction for him because 2 million of that, half of that, belongs to his spouse. Right, so that he only has 4 million, which is 2 million plus the 2 million that he's entitled to. Right, so that's an accrual claim. And in the last one, property that the deceased was able to dispose of for his own benefits. Now, this is an interesting one. They say, if at the date of your death, there is property which you can dispose of for your own benefit, but it's not necessarily your property in your hands, then you will still include it. So, for example, let's say there's a trust. Mr. A is the trustee. There is an asset in this trust. Mr. A is also a beneficiary. Because it can be like that. So Mr. A can make the decision that that asset must be paid to him. So can you see? He disposes of his own benefit. Or Mr. A can make the decision that this asset is sold to someone and the money goes to him. Right? So he can dispose of his own benefit. If he's just able to do that, that asset will still be included in his estate. Duty calculation.